Wellness for Life is brought to you by Purim Physical Therapy, Gottenberg Chiropractic Clinic, and Mojave Ottawa Community Action Partnership. Hi, I'm David Gottenborg, a chiropractor here in Pelican Rapids. I'm going to handle two subjects today. The first one is I want to revisit an old topic, and that is the difference between blood and hair mineral analysis. Uh, the second subject is arthritis and how it affects the joints, specifically range of motion. So to begin with, hair um, offers a lot of information as to what is happening within the cell. It is in a sense a mineral sampling uh, or mineral blueprint within the hair cell. Uh, as hair is forming, minerals are trapped within the hair cell and locked in that position. Um, a blood analysis, I try to explain this to people that blood is really the highway. It, it moves certain minerals, hormones, enzymes, um, immune cells to a destination. And while it's moving the minerals, uh, the body has the great ability to maintain level or maintain normal levels. For example, if the blood becomes low in a mineral, let's say calcium, uh, the body has the ability to pull calcium from storage sites such as bone or other organ tissues, thereby maintaining a normal blood level of calcium, but this person still might be developing osteoporosis. And I think that's why sometimes speaking to people listening today, why you may have been told that you have osteoporosis or osteopenia and yet you look at your blood work and you have a normal calcium reading. Um, we're going to take a look at an example today, but um, also I just want to mention that when we interpret a hair mineral analysis, we can look at things like the glandular activity, the thyroid and adrenal. Uh, we can tell a little bit about the person's diet and um, are they, in, are they sensitive or overeating carbohydrates? Um, we can tell a little bit about the stress going on in a person's life. And of course, uh, finally, um, um, their metabolic or a better word would probably be their energy level. This is what a analysis looks like. Um, the chart represents 22 different minerals, including minerals that we would consider toxic like mercury, cadmium, aluminum. It gives us a lot of insight into one's health and maybe a direction to go when we consider how we want to help a person feel better or how we want to address supplementation, in other words, taking vitamins. Uh, I've highlighted an area in yellow today just as an example and it picks up both phosphorus and zinc. And when we see low levels like this, I may have a discussion that goes something like this with the patient. Are you eating enough protein since phosphorus represents protein? If you are, is it a good source of protein? Or thirdly, are you digesting your food? In other words, are you taking something um, that affects digestion like an antacid? Um, other reasons why we'll use a hair mineral analysis, it would give me some insight into one's glandular activity. That means things like your thyroid or your adrenal glands. It will tell me a little bit about your energy level or your metabolism. Um, it will tell us things like how sensitive are you to carbohydrates? Are you overeating carbohydrates? So. We take, we use it as a tool and we take a lot of information from it and um, we think that helps people supplement better or get the best out of the supplements they're taking. This second subject today is, deals with arthritis and really how it affects the joint. And this happens quite often. Someone comes in and, and they have suspicions about their hip or their shoulder and 
whether or not they're in the right place. So um, this is one of the earliest things that we do during the exam just to determine how healthy the joint is. So let's say we have arthritis that has advanced to the degree that it's, it's going to affect the joint. Um, in the shoulder, one of the first movements you'll lose is lateral flexion or, or the ability to bend back. In the elbow, it's flexion. In the hip, the first movement one will lose is the ability to turn out with pain in the groin. The knee, the first movement we'll lose is bending, where someone may come in and they may be limited right here instead of full motion. So in closing, if you have concerns whether or not you think you're in the right place, um, this is where we start to determine how healthy the joint is and whether or not you'll respond to chiropractic care. Thank you. Thank you for watching Wellness for Life. Brought to you by Purim Physical Therapy, Gothenburg Chiropractic Clinic, and Mojave Ottawa Community Action Partnership.